Okay. Welcome, everyone. We're going to be studying from the Family History Guide today, and we're going to be talking about um, social media. And you might ask yourself why or how you might use social media for your family history. So I'm going to try to cover that for you in somewhat of a, a, a straight process. When you first go into the Family History Guide, you'll see, in fact, I'll pop over here and show you. And you, the only thing that you see up at the top in the drop-downs is blog social. And with this, you have the opportunity to go directly into the Family History Guide's pages that are out there, the websites that are available for um, that are created by the Family History Guide. So if I come in here and click on blog, it takes me directly to the Family History Guide blog. And if you haven't been using this, how many in here are already using the blog? I'd suggest that you take the time to do this. You can actually Put your name in here and subscribe to the Family History Guide blog, and you'll be notified when a new post is entered. Just as an example, you can come down here. Here's one where we created a new section in the Family History Guide called the New Activities Index, and it will explain that to you. We also post a lot of information from Family Search and the other sites that are of help to you. So if you're wondering what's going on, just go to the blog and you can find it. You'll notice over here on the right-hand side, there's a section called Categories. Under those categories, if you're looking for, let's say, social media, you can click on the button Social Media, and it will only show you those posts that have to do with social media. So, for instance, here, here's an article that we posted about using Pinterest for family search, or family history. Do any of you use Pinterest now to do your family history? There are some really fun deals. You, if you use Pinterest like a visual bookmark, it works really well. So you can take all of the Pinterest articles that you find or that you happen to create, you find a site you like, you can add that to your Pinterest page. You can search in the Pinterest section for different pins that have already been posted that have to do with family history. But another thing you can do with Pinterest is create yourself a folder of all the information that you can find for a particular ancestor that you're working on. So you can label it by the name or the, of the person or the name of the family, and everything that you can find, you can pin to that folder. And you can invite people to that folder. You can make it open. You can restrict it to just certain family members that you might be working with on that family history. Um, another great tool to be able to work on your family history. Up again on the uh, page, if we go back, anytime I click on the family history guide, I can go back to the main Facebook page that will take me to the page that's created in Facebook where we post more posts and information and let you ask questions of the Family History Guide having to do with anything. Um, mine's going to look a little bit different than... Okay, let me go back to um, the Family History Guide. And I'm right here under Blog Social. 
and there's where I would go directly to the Facebook page for the Family History Guide. Same thing with YouTube. If I click on YouTube, it's going to take me to the Family History Guide's YouTube channel that has all of our videos on it. So you can go back and go through those at any point in time. And you'll find additional recommended sites that or videos that will come up on the right-hand side of that. Let's click over there, and I'll show you. So there are many, many web um, channels that belong to different organizations in YouTube, and you can subscribe to those. So every time a new, a new video is posted, you'll be notified that that's happened, and then you can click on it and go directly to it. So we have a lot of information out here for um, a lot of the activities and things like that. There's also created playlists. So we will take those that are similar, lump them into a playlist, and then you can watch those. So if you're interested in the website itself, click down here on the website, and you can play all of them or play some of them and proceed through them. So another tool to help you get there. Okay, same thing with Twitter. We also tweet posts for, oh, it's blocked. Sorry about that. Um, if you, for those of you, of you that may be listening online, I apologize, we have some noise outside this building and it's um, causing a little havoc. So we can't get into Twitter from where we're broadcasting from, but, but know that you can go to your Twitter account. Pushing this one will take you directly to the Twitter, um, the tweets that have been posted having to do with the Family History Guide. So those are some of the basics that you'll see from there. But what I want to try to cover is those items that you can learn about these areas inside the guide. So each of the four main categories, each of the four main categories have a technology section. So if I go down to technology, it will show me the project seven, which includes all of these items across the top. We're going to go into social media and cover these, which is goal three under project seven. So the first thing you can learn about here is using social media to further your family history work. So use Google. Um, I asked one of the attendees here in the class today if she had put I asked her if she had put the name for the person she was looking for into Google and just searching there. And she hadn't done that. I did find nothing. You did find nothing. Well, that's, that's not funny, but usually it works. <laughs> She has a family from Germany that um, does not appear to belong to the person in family search, to the family that it's attached to, and there are no sources there. So oftentimes you can go directly to Google, put the name in quotes, and it'll look for that string. <coughs> The steps that you can follow, you can watch a series of videos on how to Google effectively, but I want to pop over to Google and show you how you can do this. So if I go into Google <coughs> and I'm just going to pick a name, I'm going to say Harley Parker Pratt and hit enter. 
and it will take me to all the websites where Parley Parker Pratt is a string. In other words, it's everything between your quotes, or as give you other options on those that are as close as it can get to. So the very first one that popped up is um, the Wikipedia, and I can click there and find out about Parley P. Pratt. And he was an early Latter-day Saint as well as a writer, and it talks about his death and legacy and his family. As I progress through this, there's also an autobiography of him out there. Get used to looking at the green line under the title on um, Google, because down here, this Jenny.com that you can see right here means that Jenny.com, which has uh, family trees in it, that's where that one's going to take you to. But if, if I wanted to find something about his history with the LDS Church, I would click there on that particular site. And as I go down, here's um, some information at the BYU Library about Parley Parker Pratt. Find a Grave has information about his site and also an encyclopedia of Arkansas which talks about the murder of Parley P. Pratt. You'll see that there are also, um, you can keep going through pages. If I jumped up to let's say page 9, there are Google books about that person and I can go in there and some of these books are still being published, so you can't see the pages. The, some of them also have um, the pages open so that you can read the book online. That's a good way to find someone that um, has a book written about them, a history, for example, of let's say a city or a town, and the book is out of um, out of help me out of print, and there, there's also the copyright has expired, so they can publish that and show you all the pages in that particular book. You can do that with a lot of them, but you can also come down here and in this box. From inside the book, you can type a word. Let's say it happens to be someone's name or a town that you're looking for. You can type that in the box, and it will show you a paragraph or a clip from that book, even if it's one that is um, being published. So it's very helpful. And you can see all types of information about it. And you can also come over here and find out where those books, since this one happens to be still being published, you can click over here on your favorite book site and you can order it directly from them. <coughs> you can also find it in a library. So if you click on find a library, it will take you to the locations of the libraries that have that book intact so that you can go check it out or, or borrow it through a um, borrow it through one of your local uh, your local libraries and then they can transfer it in and you can read it there. Okay, if we go back to the family history guide. You can learn about Google Earth for doing your family history. Quite often when you're doing your family history, you're finding names, but they aren't in, or you're not finding names in the state or the county that you're researching. So what you can do is put that location into Google Earth, bring that up, 
and look at the land because quite often you're going to find that on one side of the river is the town you're looking for and on the other side of the river is another county or state which gives you the hint to then go look in that county or state that's on the other side of the river and search for records in that area. So another good tool for finding those ancestors. You can learn about using Google Photos with your family history so that as you, as you find photos, that let's do this. Here's an article from family that came from Roots Tech. It was actually published in Roots Tech or presented there. And it will walk you through the process of how this works and what you can find. I can also go over to Google and as I'm searching for someone, I can go to um, Google Images. You know how someone had just made a comment that by the time you go home, after you've attended a class, your screen looks totally different. That's what's happening to me. I'm using the screen and not everything is showing up there. So what I can do is I can go over here to um, Google Books and there I can get into the books. I can go to Google Photos. and get to the information about that. But if you're looking for a really uncommon name, let's go back to books for a second. Or no, let's go to Google, Google Images right here. So I'm going to look for someone give me um, somewhat of an uncommon name. Ah. Huh. Oh, Toth. Okay, T-O-T-H. If I just put in Toth, we're going to get a lot of information that has nothing to do with family history. However, here's a little tip. You can go over here and the, use the tilde on your keyboard. That's the little squiggle mark. And you can say, genealogy and hit enter and it will narrow the focus to the name Toth and records that have been brought up. So if I'm just trying to find family by the Toth name, you can see that there are trees, there are documentation, articles, there's um, actual um, Oh, here's some Hungarian research, the Hungarian Exchange Blogspot. So here's a web, uh, a blog that someone has created that's doing Hungarian genealogy, and it's their research number seven is where that image is located, so that you can then go into their blog and see if they can help explain to you how best to find that Hungarian family information in that will help you and match your family. I know one. Um, when I went in to use Google under social media, and then I have FS Google Photos and Genealogy, I just keep getting your check. That is an article. Okay, the question has to do with her going into Google and. Okay, I just opened up another window. I'm sorry. Okay, her question was how did I get to where I am? From the family history guide, I came down here. We're in goal three of technology for using social media. I went down to number three, which had to do with Google Photos and genealogy, or a guide to using genealogy photos for genealogy. So if I click there, yes, this is a Roots Tech article, but it will. It, this was a presentation given at Roots Tech, 
having to do with Google Photos. So it explains that process. And so I clicked on just Google because once you've learned that process, I'm showing you an example of what you can find. So when I get down here, someone recommended the name TOTH, T-O-T-H, and when I did that, I added the tilde genealogy to the location, to the search, and it brought me these up. So for the person that asked about the Toth family, here was an article from the Hungarian genealogy research tip number seven. And when I go to that, it gives me information about the Hungary exchange. So the point is, is when you're using social media, you're going to find new tools and new ways of finding the information that you're specifically looking for. With the Family History Guide, we typically will give you the primary video and document that will teach you how to do it, and then you will then proceed to go do it. So by my showing you these different um, Google searches, you will find more information than what you normally would with just the links that are available inside the Family History Guide. Remember, the Family History Guide is there to kind of guide you through the process, but these tools, each tool that you use, is going to be able to provide you with specifics for the family you're searching for. That makes sense? Okay. So here's a Toth family tree that came up. Here's um, one for someone who served in the uh, Toth family, this Edwin Toth, that served in the American Revolution. And eventually you can find pages that will have specifics to your family. Now, if I knew a first name that I was looking for, and the documentation was listed the same way, in other words, let's say Edwin, sometimes documentation might show him as just the initial E. So oftentimes, after I have looked for the full name of Edwin Toth, and I'm not finding everything I might want, then I can take the first name of Edwin out. I could change it to just the initial. I can put quotes around Edwin Toth. I can try all of those tools that you will learn about through the Family History Guide and then put them to action for your specific family. So here's a... Um, Edwin, if he did come from Germany, the chances are that he may have come, if he came to America, he may well have come and used an Americanized name. So, or he could have used his given name from the country that he left. So, for instance, this Ferenz, this is a um, a rival, an immigration arrival ship page, a manifest that includes that person's name on that manifest. You'll also notice on the right-hand side, there will be related images that may also help you. So everything over here on this side will let you see those. You can click on them. Or right here where it says visit or share, you can click on this page and you can save it to your desktop, to your computer, or you can go directly to the page that that document is listed on, or you can share it with someone else. You could share it to your family. 
you could, um, for instance, if I click on share, I can send it to um, Twitter, I can email it to someone, I can post it on a Facebook page. Let's say that um, you have a, a group of family members that all belong to the Toth family or are researching the Toth family. You can create a Facebook page, a private Facebook page, that you can limit to just the family members that are researching the name Toth. And you can then post every document that you find or image that you find onto that Facebook page as material that you can use to build your tree from. So if, if you assign one family, um, the Edwin Toth family, and you get another family member that you assign the Franco Toth family to, you can post all of those in your private Facebook page and share the workload. You can get a lot more research done if you get someone to work with you and make these things come to life. Um, you can you can post that link. If I were to visit the page and I actually want to see that page, I can then right click and copy the URL and I can post that to my Facebook page or to my Pinterest page um, or tweet it, however you want to do it. But you can accumulate all of these sites through that pri into your private Facebook page or even open. If you want to open it up to anybody who's doing research on the top family, you could do that also. So you can, um, you can actually cut your research time way down if you can get a group of family members or a group of people researching a same similar name or the same family, however you want to do it. You can set up as many of those Facebook pages as you want. And you can make them public or you can make them private. You can ask people, allow people to join it, or you can, um, you can set it to approve those that you add to that page. But those are all additional tools. You can learn how to do these things by going through the steps in the Family History Guide but these are some of the examples of how you can actually put it into action. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, if anyone that's joined us online, if you have a question, you certainly can raise your hand and I'll, um, I'll try to answer your question for you. Okay. So now, if I go back to the Family History Guide, that's the section on using Google for your family history. If I go down to the next one, it's how to use YouTube. And you can find YouTube videos for just about anything. If you're working on something to do with someone from the American Revolution, you can go out and watch videos having to do with the American Revolution that will get you up to speed. Um, you can go to the various websites, the YouTube for, um, let's say for Ancestry.com. You can go to Ancestry and you can watch all of their videos. The Family History Guide will point you to some of them. But that's in an effort to help you learn to use the basics. When you want to get more in depth, you would then click on Ancestry here, and it'll, t it'll take you to their channel. And sometimes you have to watch a few second commercial before the actual video starts. But you can also subscribe to these. So if you're um, living in the Netherlands or you're living in Sweden, 
you can also subscribe and listen to those in that foreign language. The ones that are on here will be things that can be more specific to what you're looking for. So here's one on genealogy jargon that's defined and in how Ancestry uses it. Because not every one of the major websites will refer to the same similar types of things by the same name. Okay? So there's a lot of jargon that's involved with learning family history. And that's one of the things that will catch beginners off guard is saying, I don't know what they're referring to by that. So you can go watch this one video that has to do with genealogy jargon. And it'll help you with that. Um, this other one that's next to it about mirror trees, that was only done about a month ago or published a month ago. But if you're, work, if you're doing DNA, um, sometimes you can create a mirror tree based on the matches that you have that you have not been able to figure out where you match. So you're building a tree based on your matches trees and then trying to do the research to narrow it down to where you fit in. Um, it's not used as much anymore as because each of the different DNA sites have newer ways of helping you, new tools that will help you even more than just creating a mirror tree. So extra videos that are not pointed to inside the Family History Guide, once you've learned how to use the social media sites, you can then go to them and learn more about your family. The Family History Guide listed some of the major sites that are out there and some of the major bloggers that have YouTube channels. Um, and you can go, Carolyn Pointer does one on technology, but she's also doing one now on, oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> okay, so she will also teach you how to write your family histories. So you can get out and try all of these things. Um, Dear Myrtle, she actually lives here in the valley, but she does, um, she's online all the time, and she does blogs, she does um, Mondays with Mert, where she does an online podcast um, that you can um, ask questions of her, she'll have a topic that she's covering for the day, and you can do those. She has a Second Life, for anyone that's familiar with that, um, a Second Life genealogy place where you can go in and create your avatar and you learn about family history inside that, um, that Second Life location. So you can become someone else. Um, let's say that you use Roots Magic software as your uh, primary uh, record management system for your own family history. And I highly recommend that you have your own and not just use Ancestry or not just use MyHeritage or FamilySearch. Have one of your own because accidents happen. Um, in FamilySearch, you know that people can go in and change things. They can accidentally add people that shouldn't be attached to someone. They can merge someone that shouldn't be merged to that person. And, and it can be sheer accident. But when you identify those, if you have your tree at home that you have already researched and well documented, you have the information needed to go into FamilySearch and correct those mistakes. 
that have been made. Okay, so always do that. But Roots Magic has um, YouTube, a YouTube site. They have this what's called Roots Magic TV, which are like webinars, only they're very small. They can be, um, you know, five, ten minutes long as opposed to an hour to an hour and a half long webinar. So they're specific to a subject matter. So if I click on that, I can come down and I want to learn how to make my roots magic work directly with Ancestry, my Ancestry.com tree. And that's a very handy tool. And so most of these are much smaller. You can see that um, nine minutes, now there's one that's 36 minutes long, but four minutes, two minutes, talking about um, Roots Tech, um, Roots Magic being at Roots Tech and showing what classes and things they cover. Okay, Facebook. How many of you do not use Facebook? Okay, let me ask a question. Why? I got really yeah. angry, I got, well, well, I love my mission. I got this, you know, I, my friends kept, I did have an account, kept calling me and saying, I think you got scammed from someone in Africa using your, and okay. sending, out, sending out these things about, you do this, you get money. One of the participants in the class said that she does not use Facebook because she was getting so much spam. Facebook's gotten to the point that they have tools available even on your from your cell phone now, the newer cell phones, the the latest iOS versions or the latest Android, where you can go in and all you do is hit a couple of buttons to say that this account is um, pretending to be me. So all you click is this person's pretending to be me or is a fake account and then it says who's it pretending to be and you say me and within a matter of hours Facebook has removed that fake account from the site. So if you, well it's really fast now. Um, let's, okay I had someone call me just a couple days ago and there were three accounts out there under his name. He did not create the second two. So I was able to take care of it for him. I went in and searched for the fellow's name and the three sites came up. So I go into, I knew which one was the good one. I went to the second and the third ones, clicked on it, and I said, this is a fake account. And it said, who is it faking? And I said, my friend. And so they went right in, verified it, and within about two hours, when I went back in to check, it was gone. So his two duplicate accounts are gone. Um, okay, I'll be glad to. Um, the reason I ask is because family history, or family search, excuse me, Facebook is one of the best tools for doing your family history. There are, um, in fact I'll show you in a minute, there are thousands upon thousands of Facebook sites that are specific to research, to family names, to location research. If I come down here to um, let me find it, the right one. I think it is Facebook on Family History. Okay, good. This is an article that was submitted to the Family Search blog having to do with um, doing their work on Facebook. And even now, Family Search has created about a half a dozen sites. Right now they've got them for various general areas of the United States. There's one for Western Research, 
Western states, there's one for New England states, and you go in and ask your question, and as a group, everyone can answer that question for you. Um, I, um, Cindy, I don't know if, they, if the church has done any foreign country ones yet. I haven't looked, but we can check that out. Um, and this is the most, okay, there's an Ancestry page on Facebook. There's, Ancestry has ones out there for um, their DNA website, for using the different uh, tools that are available um, as you progress around. So here's one of Ancestry's recent articles about um, celebrating Veterans Day and the information that's available. One thing that's really good about these pages is you can be notified when they have a sale go on for, say, DNA site, DNA testing kits. For um, Ancestry had a four-hour window um, on, I think it was on Veterans Day, where they sold six months subscriptions to Ancestry for half price. So people that don't already have access to those tools can find very good deals by doing, following those. But I want to show you some right here. Um, you can learn about creating a Facebook page. You can also learn how to create a Facebook group as a genealogist. <clears throat> But right here, number eight, we are on Project 7 Technology, Goal 3, using social media. If you come all the way down to this very last item under Facebook, number eight, it says Genealogy on Facebook. One of the family history um, gals that you'll want to friend on Facebook is this Catherine Wilson. She also has several different sites, but I give her a tremendous amount of credit. She's also a professional genealogist, and the Facebook, I mean, the, uh, our, the Family History Guide doesn't point directly to any sites that, um, where it costs money to find what you're looking for. Um, yes, we have those four major sites, and each of them require a subscription of some sort. But Catherine went out, and she continually searches Facebook for sites that have to do with research to help you with your genealogy. When you click on this, it says Genealogy on Facebook. She updates this about four times a year. And it will bring you up a 351-page PDF document that will show you every Facebook page that's out there for the areas that you're interested in working on. So the first section has to do with geographical areas. And you can go to any page in here for these. Now, they're all linked as we come down, but I want to just show you these categories. So you've got U.S. national and regional, and that goes by state till you get to this area for um, international and regional areas. So I come down here. We were talking about, um, Cindy, your top is Hungarian, correct? Let's see if by chance we have something on Hungary. Okay, it's on page 200. So I can scroll down here to page 200, and you can see up at the top of the page, depending on what PDF tool you have on your computer. So I come down here to Hungary, and I have direct links to all the pages that are created on Facebook that are specific to Hungary research, or Hungary history, or Hungarian DNA. Um, so there's a Hungarian-American genealogy society. 
So if I were to click on this, it's going to pop me into that page. And you can join this group. So anytime you see a little box that says join, you ask to join that. Some of the pages will ask you what part of, um, let's say, what part of oh, the Hungarian American, what part of the United States your TOTS immigrated to, or something like that, just so they can make sure that you're not a spammer. Because most of these groups are very tightly controlled, so that only the people that join see the information and can search the information on their particular page. So they're quite secure. Some of them are open to the public, some of them are not. So on this one, this group is for anyone who's interested in exploring their Hungarian ancestors and bringing groups together. So you can actually create different groups within even that page. People are posting documents. Um, they even recommend another site called Hungarian Treasures that could help. Um, Hungarian Foods, that are, it's another page out there that would um, can help. You might, re I mean, Cindy, you might remember some recipes that were passed down through your Hungarian side that you you can share with others um, and find them. Find them. Um, here's where someone's. Um, trying to find information about their particular grandfather. And people will comment and post replies that will help you find your family members. You will also sometimes find on some of these um, international sites, as well as the American sites, if someone from another country is finding these Facebook pages for trying to find out families that have come to America. But if I was looking for someone in England or a particular county in England, those people know that area and live there, and they will help you find the answer. If, um, if, if I didn't know Hungarian, the language, and I'm trying to find someone there, chances are there are people from Hungary that will participate in these sites, and they will translate a document for you. So I really believe, as much as we use Facebook for a lot of various and sundry things, there are good things about Facebook, there are bad things about Facebook. But I honestly believe that Facebook was invented for genealogy research. It is unbelievably helpful. So remember, you want that gene genealogy on Facebook list, and that will list them all. In fact, I'm going to pull that back up a second. For the pages, like here was a, you can get right down to a county, and there'll be multiple pages for that county. Yeah, Cindy, she has a question. Mm -hmm. So can you just review how you got that page? What the Facebook? Page? Um, how I got to genealogy on Facebook, mm -hmm. or the or the Hungarian on this page. Okay, this general list was right here when I was in the family history guide. I'm on Project Seven social media, and I'm in the process of learning about how to use Facebook. And I come down here to the very last item under Facebook, number eight. Use the genealogy on Facebook file to search for Facebook pages related to family history. So when I did that, it brought me up her page. And there's the genealogy on Facebook list that she publishes and updates about four times a year. There are thousands literally thousands, she usually says, anyway, there's 351 pages of links. So she starts out with the um, U.S. and regional areas. Then she goes into the countries. 
uh, lineage societies. You can see just a sample with every page I'm on. And then you, there's even miscellaneous, how to write histories, um, software that you use, um, railroads, libraries, photographs, oral histories, obituaries, military records. She, she will take you to all those pages, um, to those links. So I'm looking over here to the right. And for the Vietnam War, for th several of them right here on page 277. So I'm on, up here at the top. I'm on page 10 of 350, 351 pages. So I'm just going to grab my cursor, drag it down till I get to 277. Two seventy seven right here. And here are the pages for Korean War, Vietnam War. So people have created Facebook pages having to do with like the sons and daughters of the Vietnam War and Vietnam War history. So you can go to a lot of these pages and you can ask those questions that you've not been able to find anywhere else. I might want to ask someone, well, let's go into one and we'll find out what people have asked. So let's look at, um, let's look at Vietnam veteran, the sons and daughters of Vietnam veterans. So this is a group that I would have to join in order to see all the detail. Um, others, so if I was interested, I would go ahead and, um, I apologize for clicking through all these pages. But l let me just even show you mine. If I go in, yes, I'm on mine. So I have a lot of, a lot of pages that I follow, um, I can go to the section called Groups or Shortcuts to Groups. For instance, Ancestry DNA Matching. If I'm doing DNA research, I can come in here and ask a question. So this person asked, is it possible for a person to share over 3,000 centimorgans with an ant? No identical twins involved. Well, I'll tell you right up front, you're not going to share that with an aunt. You're going to share it with a parent or a sibling. But if I look at their comments, um, the very first, well, one of the responses here is no. This is how much I share with an aunt. But they will walk you through and and direct you to um, to charts that will show you what possible locations you can be to to match to to fit that quantity of centimorgans. Okay, so like two hundred might be an, a first cousin once removed, or a um, an aunt great nephew kind of thing. And it'll show you those options. And that's if there's no crossovers. Well, a lot of us know that there are a lot of crossovers where a lot of our ancestry um, ancestors moved like to the state of Utah um, in the United States. And they um, intermarried in these small towns. So you get like a second cousin that married their brother or their half siblings great aunt you know kind of things like that where it adds to the quantity of dna but you can ask those types of types of questions on the site and people will give you answers there are people that monitor these pages that will also step in and keep the uh, page under control because you'll always find somebody that's going to complain about something but they will stop them. So utilize Facebook when you're doing your family history. That really is 
one of the best tools you'll find. So if I go back to the Family History Guide, we then can learn about using Twitter and using Pinterest and using Instagram to do your family history. You can set up more of those individual sites specifically for your genealogy. I have, um, I have Pinterest pages that some of them are learning sites. Some of them are, I have another folder for, um, for DNA matches. I have one for DNA learning materials. I have one for um, images where my ancestors lived. So if I can find pictures for the locations they lived, I pull all those together in a, in a um, Pinterest location, and I have all of those there. Then I can just pull from there and add that to my history. So that pretty much covers social media using the Family History Guide. So one more time, I took you through the steps that are inside the Family History Guide, and then I expanded out to show you what you can do with some of those sites and how you can put those to good use. So thank you for joining us. And hopefully you'll attend more of our classes as we progress. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.